Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Den, the show where I go on and on about the things that are on my mind. My name is Akrisa Tigris, and let's get right into it. So, for the past day or so, into today, I've been tinkering with some ROMs and emulators. Now, I don't know if you're thinking, oh god, like, isn't that, like, illegal pirating? Like, no. Okay, first off, it mostly pertains to video game preservation. Not so much piracy, at least in my eyes anyway. To some people, yeah, it's piracy, but to me, it's more so along the lines of preserving games of all creeds and types and genres and all that. And... Recently, I had decided to sate my curiosity. I was doing research into uh, an add-on for the Nintendo 64 called the 64DD, or the 64 Disk Drive. Now, for those of you who might not know, the uh, 64DD was an add-on for the N64 that allowed for the expansion of some games or even full games in general and the main medium that the DD would use or had used was essentially floppy disks. Now that in and of itself is a little worrisome to collectors and avid uh, preservers. And that's because the main medium of storage, the floppy disk, was often unreliable at least, or at most. Now, for those of you who have, uh, for those of you who went to school in maybe the 80s or the mid to late 90s and early 2000s, you probably have handled at least one floppy disk. And if not, you are one of the lucky ones. <laughs> because whenever you made a project and you saved it to that floppy disk, sometimes it would goof up and it would be erased. Now, that's because the disk was either demagnetized or it was possibly exposed to another magnet or magnetic surface. And that means that the data... The, the data is pretty much dead. It, it's, it's dead. <laughs> and... A lot of people that I went to school with, my, and also myself included in that, I have... Like, they have... Um, they have had their data completely wiped. Their projects were gone, and there was no way to get them back. Which was inherently a, a big problem back in the day, especially if you were, like, in advanced classes and all that. But anyway, back to the N64 DD. Because of its unreliable storage... A lot of the discs, whether they be development discs or um, or retail discs, they would oftentimes get erased. And it would be on total accident out of the blue. And that's what that's basically what makes it so worrisome. Because there could be um, a disk drive game out there that nobody's ever heard of. And if that disk... If that disk gets damaged or the data gets wiped, then... it could be the end of that game's legacy. Though... Some of the games, admittedly, or at least the ones that I've seen, and in this case, one that I've played, thanks to ROMs and emulation, some of the games aren't exactly that great. 
Um, the one game that I managed to get to work on the ROM and emulator that I used was Doshin the Giant. And uh, for those of you who um, might have heard this name before, uh, Doshin the Giant was actually re-released or remastered and re-released for the Nintendo GameCube back in 2002, a mere two years after the original came out on the 64 disk drive. And this will mostly be familiar to uh, both the Japanese and anybody who lives in the PAL regions, because only those two regions of the world got this remaster. So yes, there is a version of Doshin the Giant out there for English-speaking audiences, however, it's for the PAL version. So, or it's for the PAL region, so you would need a PAL GameCube. If you live in the UK, you might have this game somewhere. You might have the console, you might have the game, or not, because apparently the GameCube didn't sell well, which is kind of sad, because that's one of my favorite consoles. But anyway, um... So yeah, I've, I've, I've been trying to get at least two of the games that I have now to work. Um, I managed to get uh, Doshi and the Giant to work. If what I said before wasn't a dead giveaway, I got it to work, and it was kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, gameplay-wise, it was... It, it was your run-of-the-mill god simulator. That's basically what it is. It, it's like it's like Okami, but without the action and adventure. It's just a very chill, zen kind of uh, god simulator game. So, kind of like uh, black and white for kids. So yeah, um, the main problem I had was that um, a vast majority of the plugins, including the one, uh, including the plugin that um, the little info text file said would work, uh, Glide64, didn't work. I had to use uh, Jabo, and Jabo, with Jabo I managed to get it up and running, and um, there are some very minute uh, graphical glitches um, the tall grass and bamboo textures are discolored in some cases and just garbled, pixely messes in other cases. And the same can be said for Doshin's face as well as the sun texture in the opening cinematic. So, that's a problem. <laughs> a problem that, quite frankly, I can't fix because my options are extremely limited and I can't. I, I, I can't. I just can't. Uh, <sighs> let's see. And I've been trying to get... I've been trying to get um, Mario Artist Paint Studio to work as well. But most likely due to emulation problems, I can only get past the start screen. Once I get past the start screen, the game completely soft locks me. So, all I can do is sit there and listen to the music. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. I have tried... I have tried everything. Okay? <clears throat> I've tried everything. I've tried changing the... Uh, I've tried changing the graphics plugin. I've tried changing the control schemes. I've even made sure to have the N64 mouse peripheral option enabled. I don't know what's going on with that ROM. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Or maybe it's my crappy computer with Windows Vista on it. I don't know. Um... But it, it, it's been a hell of a struggle to get it to work properly. Um, I might try a different game later. 
later on, maybe? Like, um... What's another 64 disk drive game I could play? Aside from the other Mario Artist games. Um... Crap. I don't know. I'm gonna have to check, um... The website, which, by the way, for any of you guys who are curious, go to 64dd.org if you want to get your hands on the uh, development version of Project 64 with the 64dd add-on uh, hooked up and ready. Um, and also, you can find retail um, discs or ROMs, basically. This includes Doshin the Giant, Doshin the Giant 2, uh, all the Mario Artist games, and um, you have to download the uh, proper IPL for the Japanese versions of the game. And just a bit of a heads up, if you want to play um, 64DD games on an actual N64, there is a special thing you can download over there that will make it so you can save the games to a flash cart and you can put it in your N64 console and you can play it. But, just, just be forewarned, region locking might be a problem. <laughs> uh, at least last I checked it might be a problem. Um, who knows, maybe, maybe they might have fixed it. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. That's my struggle. I don't know why it's such a struggle to um, emulate N64 DD games for me right now. Maybe it's because of my computer. <laughs> because I remember reading somewhere on the website that computers from 2008 and earlier can't really run the software. So... If you have a computer like mine, which is basically like from 2008, I suggest you don't use those. <laughs> I suggest you uh, use one that is more recent or anywhere after 2008. So anywhere from probably t 2009 or 2010 up to now is fine. I don't know because I don't own a computer that recent. <laughs> but anyway... I hope you guys enjoy uh, trying to emulate these games, because God knows I am. Ugh. But that about wraps her up for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Den. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment if you'd like. That being said, I'm Accursed Tigress. And I am out. See ya.